Thank you for joining us this week on The Tongue with Dr. Mike. I'm so glad you're here with us again. Make sure, as always, you're going to our website, thetonguespeakslife.com. That's the center for everything that's associated with us. You can get your most recent podcasts on there from not just the tongue, but uh, with Pillars from Heaven. Uh, Of course, if you want access to the full catalog, you know where to go. Go to anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Right. Take notice on Facebook under uh, Psalm 346 Ministries. Right. Make sure you join that group. Uh, You can also get to Psalm 346Ministries.org. That's our our new social media platform. But also now tune in to Faith Radio by Psalm 346 Ministries. The Tongue with Dr. Mike and Pillars of Heaven play on there 24 hours a day. You can submit your prayers on Prayercast there. Listen, we all need prayer, right? If you have a specific need uh, and you want to ask for prayers, reach out. You know, it's that simple. Un- unleash the, the prayer warriors that, that are, are there to support you and pray for you. We all need that, right? Make sure you're listening to Pillars of Heaven as well. That's a fun podcast with JB and, and Joanna and Leah and myself. Uh, we have different guests on there. We talk about different uh, topics. and it's, it's a fun podcast to be a part of. If you need a Bible, make sure you reach out to us. We, we do a Bible for every believer. You know, you can message us, uh, message us right there at Psalm 346 Ministries uh, on Facebook or you, the tonguespeakslife.com at the bottom of the page. You can go there and just send us a quick, a quick message. Hey, I need a Bible. Not a problem, right? Okay. Cure International. I'm going to keep talking about Cure. Make sure you're checking that out. They, they are... You know, they're healing the sick and they're proclaiming the kingdom of God. Make sure you check out what Cure International is all about. There's a link right there on the Tongue Speaks Life. Uh, also, if you want to donate to, to Cure, there's a link there. You can donate directly to them. If you want to donate to the Tongue with Dr. Mike, uh, that is down at the bottom. And, you know, everything there goes to support everything included with all the programs that we're doing right so uh, our family keeps growing i want to say welcome back god bless you no matter where you're listening you know thank you for the wide reach this program is is getting and it's continuing to make and let's push on right so today's topic is about obedience so you know during this week yeah this reading for me i was taken back to the story of abraham okay that entire story it's truly amazing. I mean, what a time and a series of events, if you could try to imagine living through, right? So, so let me catch up a little bit of the story. So maybe you're unfamiliar, but here are some of the events during his life that you may remember, or, or just so you can have reference, right? So we're back in Genesis. This is after the flood of Noah. This is after the Tower of Babel. One of Noah's sons, many ge- generations later, comes... Uh, through Shem, much later on generations, we get Abraham, right? Uh, which back then his his name was simply Abram, if you remember that. So so the Lord tells Abram that you know he's going to make him a great nation and and he's going to bless him. So to jump ahead, Abram takes uh, Sarah's wife, whose name back then was Sarai, and his nephew Lot, if you remember Lot. Yeah, so. Abram takes his wife and his nephew Lot, and they send they set out to the land of Canaan. Right, so God tells Abram that this land was going to be given to his offspring. So now there's a famine in the land. Abram ends up going to Egypt for a little bit, and if you remember that story, Abram uh, Abram tells Pharaoh that his wife Sarai is actually his sister, not his wife. Uh, you know. She was so beautiful. They, Abram was scared they were going to kill him so they could have her, right? So read that story. It's super interesting. You know, Lot and Abram, uh, they, they grow to gain a lot of possessions. They end up parting ways. You know, the land can't support both of them and all their flocks and all their, their possessions. So, you know, jump ahead. Remember now, Abram has no sons because Sarai cannot have children, so uh, in steps Hagar and her son Ishmael, find out what happens there. God creates a covenant with Abram, uh, the covenant of circumcision. Uh, now, now remember, Abram's about 100 years old and Sarai's about 90. And we go through the Sodom and Gomorrah story. Uh, we know what happens there, what happens to Lot's wife. Uh, then we see what happens with Lot and his daughters at the cave. You know, God changes 
Abram's name to Abraham and Sarai to Sarah. They end up having Isaac. And that brings us all up to Genesis 22, where God tests Abraham. And this is where we find the greatest example of obedience, in my opinion, uh, probably ever. Um, all right, so now that we're all brought up to speed, uh, before we go into that part, let's let's talk about obedience, right? So what is obedience? So obedience is any compliance with an order or a request or, uh, or a law or submission to anybody's authority, right? But, but the true meaning of obedience, it, it, in simple terms, it means just hearing the word of God and acting on it right? It implies aligning our will to God's will, doing what God's asked us to do. It's when we completely surrender to his authority and base our decisions on our actions and on his word, right? So, so what does obedience to God mean? So biblical obedience to God means to hear, to trust, to submit and surrender to God uh, and his word, right? So in the story of the Ten Commandments, we see just how important the concept of obedience is to God, Right In Deuteronomy 11, it sums it all up by saying, obey and you will be blessed. One of the many ways uh, to worship and glorify God is through obedience, right? Living in obedience to God in all things, even, even the mundane. You know, it's a great way to show your love and respect for him. Obedience is also a suiting way to draw near to him and grow in your relationship with him. For many reasons, you know, obedience is an important part of a Christian's relationship with Christ. So, so why should we obey? And Genesis 1, 26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that uh, they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man to rule over the earth. He created us to shepherd the animals and to work the ground, right? God certainly does not need us to take care of his creation, you know, as he's almighty and powerful, but he asks us to do it. So why is that, right? One answer is that God's calling us to obedience and relationship with him through, through that obedience, right? By obeying his call to take care of the earth, you know, we learn more about him and we grow an understanding of his heart and his desire for our lives. Obedience also means personal growth. It leads to that. Every command God asks of us uh, isn't for his sake, it's for ours. The call to obedience is for our benefit, You know, he knows what's best for us and how to grow us to be stronger and and become a more passionate follower of Christ. Galatians 6 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from this flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Right? So you reap what you sow. We talked about that already. When we choose to shepherd what God's given us, we show him that we're grateful for the blessings he's bestowed upon us. Right? You can read about that. First Peter talks about that. When, when, we, when we take care of what he's given us, we show him that we're capable of being obedient to his commands, whether they're big or little. By practicing obedience in the small things, we're laying the foundation for obedience in the bigger things. When when it may be hard to trust and and, and obey him, the small things lead to the bigger, right? Fostering good habits in the small things God asks of you will help make obedience in the bigger tasks even easier. When you foster good habits of spiritual discipline and sowing seeds of selflessness and and selfishness and sacrifice day by day, you will resemble Jesus more. So what are you doing today that's preparing you for the future God has for you and the future that you're hoping for? By gratefully, you know, taking care of the small things God has placed in your life, you like make you know, simple things, making your bed, watering your plants. You're showing him that, you know, you're a good shepherd of what he gives you by, by obeying in all things, even the, the mundane and the, and the things that seem ridiculous. You're showing God that you're willing and, and able to obey whatever he asks of you. First John 5, 2 says, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. 
For this is the love of God, and we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So obedience to God is not only a way to worship him, but it's a way to get closer to him, uh, to prepare for whatever he leads you to and, and, and to grow you as a person. As Christians, we know that we are not saved by our works. You know, it's faith without works. Uh, that part of it's dead, right? If you, if you don't have faith, if you don't have works with your faith, it's dead. James 2 talks about that. Obeying God should not be a burden, but it should be a joy, a way of worshiping, uh, worshiping him and growing in your faith. You know, ultimately, ultimately we'll feel most satisfied when we are in, in that right relationship with God, which only comes through obedience. You know, if you look up obedience in the dictionary, and I hate when people say that and, you know, you do that. But remember, according to the, the dictionary, obedience definition is the act or instance of obeying, the quality or state of being obedient. Furthermore, the definition of obedient is submissive to the restraint or command of authority, willing to obey. So therefore, you know, the meaning of Christian obedience is the act of submitting or obeying to the commands or the laws of God, the highest authority, the highest creator, the father of all mankind, right? So if you have faith in God and believe Christianity is the truth, obedience is the practice of living by faith, obeying the teachings of the Bible, right? So here, let's jump into some scriptures here and, you know, that'll that'll give you an idea about obedience in a couple of these Bible verses that talk about it. So John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, right? Acts 5 says, but Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. First Peter 1, 14 says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Man, we could do a whole series on that one. Right back to first John, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. We talked about that, right? Isaiah one says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Luke six says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? That's a big one, right? All right, Exodus 23. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be your enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Uh, adversary to your adversary, sorry. Psalm 119, I have chosen the way of faithfulness and I have set the rules before me. John 14, 31, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here, right? There's different types of ways to obey God. There's different forms of Christian obedience. You know, the the first two forms of obedience uh, are given when, when Jesus teaches about when he talked about the greatest commandment of the law in Matthew 22, um, let's jump there. Matthew 22, uh, you can start in verse 36. It says, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, right? On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So love the Lord your God, right? Obedience can be simply honoring and praising God for your life and the blessings involved in it. You know, while, while that seems obvious and easy, there are so many distractions in the, the especially the modern world, you know, with technology uh, that can side, that sidetracks us, right? That sidetracks you from appreciating the glory of God in your daily life. You have to focus to obey the greatest commandment of Jesus and love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. You know, giving thanks to him continually and loving, you know, neighbors as yourself. Um, in order to love your neighbors, your friends, or, or, you know, even your family, you have to forgive them when they do things wrong to you, you know. Even look at the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, Matthew 6, you know, it tells you if you forgive only the people when they sin against you, uh, your heavenly father will also forgive you. That's an important step of the process, you know, because humans are imperfect. You know, trespasses against us are always going to occur. You know, so it's vital to forgive in order to love your neighbor. Obeying God means putting commandments above our desires to hold uh, anything that holds resentment towards others. You know, you have to forgive and let go of that anger. 
You know, the Bible instructs us to pray without ceasing. In 1 Thessalonians, it talks about that. Chapter 5, to live by faith means to live by prayer, commonly going to God in supplication and thanksgiving, right? If you feel that you're, that you're struggling uh, with understand this, understanding obedience or practicing obedience, you pray for guidance and inspiration, right? You know, pray, prayer itself is... is a form of obedience, you know, scripture tells us to humble ourselves and pray. So that's obedience in itself. And we always go back to Philippians 4, you know, don't be anxious about anything. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, right? Scripture in, in you know, the word of God is a magnificent, uh, magnificent source of, uh, of wisdom and encouragement and, you know, to know and obey the commandments of God. You know, you look to the Bible for inspiration uh, in your devotion. Uh, you know, God blesses you with love and peace and faith, you know, and, and, and that's a little bit about obedience, but just reading the word is, is giving you those first steps of obedience, right? So, so now you know what obedience is and, and we need to know why uh, that's so important. We need to see how to be obedient, right? So let's let's jump back to Abraham and continue on with that story, right? And this is a powerful story for me, um, especially because I'm a father, um, and a lot a lot of thought goes into this story. So let's go back. It says God tested Abraham and said, "Take your son." your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region he tells you to go to and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on that mountain. What? Right? Crazy. but Insane of what God is asking Abraham to do, especially because Abraham and Sarah have gone through, uh, Sarah was barren, and, and they're promised this child, and I mean, they're severely old, and this is a miracle in itself that Isaac is even um, born. And now is God is telling him to take that boy and sacrifice him on the mountain. Right? Imagine what goes through your mind right at that moment. You know, God, God's blessed you your whole life. You know, you've been super close with him. Uh, he's promised to make you the father of so many nations, more numerous than the sands on the seashore, right? He tells you to take your son, the one that was promised to you, your your old barren, uh, you know, your wife who's beyond childbearing age, she's barren. It, take him and offer him as a burnt sacrifice. I can imagine the questions and the confusions and the wonder and the anger and the fear, you know, all wrapped, uh, all wrapped together after you hear that. But the Bible doesn't say any of that. It only says early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey, cut wood for the offering and set out for the place God showed him. Right. Before we go any further, how do you fathom that? Right. You want to talk about obedience in the face of fear and anger and not knowing, you know, who among us could endure such a task or even hear it. I, I don't know if I could endure hearing that, you know, imagine every heartbreaking step of that journey when your mind, you know, doesn't stop racing and your body feels nauseous at the thought of what you're about to do, you know, uh, about you, what you were told to do about you know, what you just shut your mouth and you're doing, you know, how does he keep it together when his son Isaac notices that there's no lamb offering to make and Abraham responds that the Lord will provide the offering. You know, does he mumble something under his breath? Does he want to vomit and cry and lash out at God for even, you know, the mere mention of doing such a thing? Is he angry uh, that he's doing it? Is he doing it out of worry? Is he doing it out of fear? You know, imagine finally arriving at that place and arranging the wood, arranging the wood to get ready for the offering, and then having to reach down to your innocent child's face and grab a hold of him and tie him up. Right? Is the child fighting him? Is he trying to escape? Is he bawling his eyes out and screaming for help or begging his father not to do it? What is going through his mind as he lays his son on top of the wood and raises his knife up to slay him? 
Imagine the fear in his son's eyes that are full of tears. Imagine Abraham's heart breaking on the inside. And then all of a sudden, a loud voice from heaven saying, Abraham, do not lay a hand on that boy. Do not do anything to him. Right? Then he unties his son and he takes him off the wood pile. Is he screaming inside in pain and agony or is it relief of what almost happened? You know, then they look and the Lord provides a ram for them to offer as that sacrifice. And we know from that story that God uses this as a test to see if Abraham truly feel, fears the Lord and that he holds nothing back from obeying him, not even his own son. Right? Abraham is told, you know, after that he'll be blessed and his descendants will be more numerous than the stars in the sky. You know, this is one of the greatest examples of obedience ever, to not withhold anything from the Lord, to obey him at all costs. I wonder how many of us could endure that type of test. I know when it comes to kids, I, I have a hard time handling anything that has to do with them being in fear or, or harm coming to them. I don't know how Abraham, you know, didn't have a nervous breakdown or his heart didn't explode from sadness. I, I don't get it. Isaac was spared because of obedience and there, you know, there's only one other example of obedience greater than this that I know of, you know, and, and it was to accomplish the overall victory of death from the grave. And it was done willingly. You know, it was Jesus who, who did die and, and was not spared so that you may live. You know, don't you want to meet him? He went through all that pain and agony and his heart literally burst. So, so that, you know, he could, you could be spared that an eternal life of separation. What are you going to say to him one day when you're looking at him face to face? Father, thank you so much for this example of obedience from Abraham. You know, sometimes it's hard to imagine how to, to have such great faith and such great obedience to at any, at any cost do your will. Thank you for teaching us about obedience and the importance of it to follow your will. Let us learn to grow in faith, to grow in obedience, to grow in wanting to know you better and serve you completely. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that you did not spare. To send your son on a mission just to die in order for anyone to live, knowing the pain and suffering, knowing what that would be like. Jesus, thank you for doing all of that, not just for anyone, but for me. I didn't deserve it. and Nothing I can ever do can thank you enough for gifting me that message of hope. And that's what we all have now is hope. As we face a new year of unexpected pressures and challenges, let our eyes stay focused on you above, on the things that matter, and let us learn to, to lean more on, on you for strength. For as we lean, uh, we learn that we cannot count on ourselves for anything, you know, only you. We don't lean on our own understanding. There's nothing impossible for you. I pray that the listeners of this podcast receive the blessing they need for this week. I pray that they find fulfillment in waiting on you, that in their season, you will bring about all the changes they need. I pray that they are ready for when you take them there this year. Keep them humble and focused, but have them ready for what you are about to do in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, we always jump back to Romans 10, uh, and it says, you know, the, the word is near you, it's in your mouth and in your heart. And if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved, right? That's it. You know, there, there's, there's nothing else to it. It's with your heart that you believe in and are justified and with your mouth you profess that faith. And, and that's it, it's that simple, right? Imagine being tested the way Abraham was. I, mean, I don't know if I could do it. I, I don't know if I, I being a father, I, I can't even imagine that scenario. I, I, I really, I, I don't, I don't, I can't wrap my head around that. But remember, this life is so quick. It, it, it's, a, it's a quick flash and it's over, right? Our decisions today carry eternal consequence, right? And you don't want to meet Jesus, the one who died for you, on the other side when it's too late when you've already rejected him, when he says, I died for you and you didn't even take the time to know who I am. That's a scary thing. And it's a very real thing, right? Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, man, he's going to show up. Let him show up. There's people out there searching for truth. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? People are looking for answers. The answer's right in front of your face. I pray as you go on this week and you go on this year that you put your faith in God and as times get shaky and they're going to get shaky and, and, you know, things that you think you're confident in now, when that confidence is shaken, you know, you better have a firm foundation to stand on. And I'm, I'm begging everybody, take the time. It's so simple. Okay, God, I'm scared. Hey, God, you know, I've heard about you my whole life or I'm hearing about you. Uh, I want to get to know you more. Reach out. It's that simple. A good way to do that is to reach out to the tonguespeakslife.com and say, I need a Bible, right? And I'll ship it out. It'll come right to you, right? Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The Lord your God goes with you wherever you go. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.